Assalamualaikum and hello class Welcome to this video learning session Whereby in this video learning session I shall recap from our lecture on the topic Introduction to Maritime Economics My name is Dr. Muhammad Azam Din And in this video I shall guide you and revise with you on the concept of maritime economy. In this video as well, I will also touch on the history of the maritime activities. So, what is maritime economy? Maritime economy can be described as the economic activities consisting macro and micro economics in relation to the sea, ocean, and the shorelines. Such economic activity harvests the resources either above or on or below or underneath the ocean. Therefore, these macroeconomic activities from the maritime consist of A. Maritime transportation B. Fisheries C. Maritime tourism D. Oil and gas exploration E. Maritime port F. Maritime trading and research G. Human capital H. Trading and financing I. Defense and security and J. Other activities such as demolition and scrapping. Before we go into details, I do believe on the basic knowledge. In this course, Maritime Economy, it is best for both of us to understand the concept of ocean vessel. So, what is an ocean vessel? An ocean vessel is a ship or basically it is a bulk that floats on a body of water supporting with a propulsion mechanism being used to transport people and cargoes from one destination to another. It is a ship, a mode of tra water transportation. History has shown that civilization development has a positive relationship with economic activities. Such economic activities pushes mankind to become efficient in their daily activities that led to civilization maturity. The ancient civilizations such as Greek, Roman, European, Cholas, Srivijayan and China, the Chinese able to develop their civilization with conquests as well as trading. The emperor conquered its opponent areas not just for political reason but also to obtain resources from conquered area. Through such activities of conquering, empire expanded and civilization began to grow. People and goods began to move within the empire. The movement involved the use of animal carts. Unfortunately, volume moved by animal carts is considered small per unit. It requires huge number of carts and people to move goods from one point to another. To overcome such problems, ships are the best solution to move large quantity of goods from one location to another. Ancient ships like galley Jong, Trim, and Periwakang has been used as medium to move people and goods. Such usage of ancient ships flourished cities and these empires' coastline. Cities of Athens and Alexandria began as a port during its Greek Empire, and it is thrived until today as one of the maritime center.
the movement of goods and people using animal carts consume a huge number of resources. Animal carts using horses, cows, donkeys and camels only able to carry small number of goods and people. The usage of this animal powered mechanism consume high transit time to move from one location to another. We could see that movement, for example, from Alor Star in, in Kedah to Perai in Penang using a bullock cart, which using cow as a transport of hundred of three hundred kilogram of rice, would require possibly three carts with four cattle for each movement, six human beings to operate the cart, and transit times would took about ten days. The ocean ship, on the other hand, able to load much larger cargoes compared to animal car. The ship sails with wind as a mechanism to push it forwards, able to make more cargoes to be loaded, and it is made the car the ship as much more economical this equipment compared to animal carts. A ship able to sail from Kuala Progress to Perai within one day. This make the ship much better mode of transport. Therefore, in the age of navigation, human beings begin to take advantage of ocean vessel as mode of transport as well as mechanism for international trade. During this period between 15th century to the 17th century, the European began to sail all around the world to search for new trading routes. They are looking for the main commodities which are being searched, which consists of gold and spices. Some of the names that become well known at this age are Vasco da Gama, Christopher Columbus, Pedro Alvarez Cabral, Ferdinand Magellan, and James Cook. Such situation arise due to the trade block between Christian faith in Europe and Islamic faith in Asia and Africa and Far East that produce Six and porcelain is the main target for the Europeans. Sailing to the east is believed for European to find new source of gold and spices. The European begin to build ships and maritime navigational equipment such as compass and astrolabe, which has been used to assist in their sailing. During this period, it is different at the Far East and Malay Archipelagos. The maritime activities in this area, the Far East and Malay Archipelagos, are flourish. There are the Malaccan Sultanate Empire that are banking in the maritime trade. Due to the strategic location of Malaccan Sultanate, between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, it has made Malacca port to be the center of trade hub. The vessel at this Malay archipelagos were very big and huge. The expedition of Admiral Cheng Ho is believed to sail between China to Africa, to the Middle East and the Malay archipelago with a fleet that adapted from the Malay technologies. Now, we shall look at the age of sail. In this age of sail, begin from the 18th to the 19th century. During this period, three superpowers began to dominate global maritime trade. These superpowers are the Spanish, Dutch, and the British. 
During this period, the European companies such as East India Companies, the EIC, and Dutch East India Company, VOC, established trading posts in Africa, Middle East, Indian continent, Malay Archipelago, and the Far East. Such situation made EIC and VOC to dominate the trade between Europe and the Far East. They are sailing vessel which made from wood and rely on wind sailing, able to move and transport goods such as spices, teas and gold from the Far East and Malay Archipelagos to the Europe. The European superpowers began to colonize area in the Far East as part of their dominance to monopolize the raw materials. These maritime areas are in the Malay Archipelagos being controlled by the British, Dutch and the Spanish. This area being colonized, colonialized until the end of World War II. The age of steam began when Europe experienced the first industrial revolution. During the age of steam period, ocean vessel began to transform from wooden hull to a steel hull. Steam engine began to be incorporated into the steel-based ocean vessel. At this time, size of ocean vessels become bigger. Using steel as a structures and material for building an ocean vessel, the result, re, the result vessel become much more bigger in size and able to carry larger cargo quantities in a single trip and the lifespan of the ocean vessels increases. The traveling or transit time, especially with this steel-based ocean vessel, has improved as well. It has become much shorter transit time sailing between Europe to the American continent, crossing the Atlantic Ocean, or from Europe to the Far East, sailing via Cape of Group Hope and Indian Ocean. Rather than sailing for six months from Europe to Far East by using sailing vessels, the steamers able to sail from Europe to Far East for three months. This has increased the captivities of movement of good people and good, as well as shorter the transit time of traveling between Europe to the Far East. During the age of stream, it is not just about the steam engine. The invention of communication such as telegraph has improved the maritime industry as well as maritime trading activities. The best reference for your knowledge in situation related to this period would be the story of RMS Titanic. RMS Titanic is one of the ocean vessels from this era. In the 20th century, this is the era of the emergence of trampers and ocean liner. And ocean trampers are ships that be, that being traded on the spot market and the vessel does not have a fixed schedules or itinerary. Whereas the liner, either cargoes liner or ocean liners, were ocean vessels that sail with a specific route, usually crossing the continent. During this era, independent ship owners began to provide services to the market. There is emergence of companies such as Kunat Liner Services for Ocean Liner and Northern for Trampers. These companies are still conducting their businesses until today. Now, here we come to the 21st century. 
during this 21st century era, the concept of containerized box revolutionized the movement of goods. Cargoes begin to be moved in a steel box with a dimension of 20 footer or 40 footer. Such approach improve interchangeability of the movement of goods between road to rail and to ships. The ocean vessel, either containerized, bark cargoes or ocean tankers, has become much more bigger. For example, vessels such as MERS Triple E able to load 18,000 TEUs in a single voyage. And ultra-large crude carrier ocean tankers are now able to load 500,000 tons dead with tonnage of oil in a shipment. At the same time, the aeroplane has begun to dominate the the mode of transportation in movement of people. Transcontinental movement become much faster with the utilization of aeroplane. The aeroplane has disrupted the ocean liner service. Therefore, the ocean liner companies began to change their businesses towards ocean cruise market. In the 21st century, Technological advancements enhance maritime trade and transportation. Technologies on land as well as on board of the ocean, of the ocean vessel, enable the ships to make communication between the ships and its shore counterparts. Satellites, internet and radio communication enable seafarers to communi communicate between the vessel the vessel, uh, their counterpart at the seas, and also the counterpart at shores. Such improvement in technological advancement in maritime technologies has made the maritime trade and transportation industry to become more competitive.